Coming off of Black Ops, we were really energized. The team had done its best work ever, but we knew we could do so much more. With Call of Duty Black Ops 2, the team is pushing the boundaries of Call of Duty on every front, providing players with a complete package that offers something for every kind of player. The single player campaign, the multiplayer, and the zombies are our team's most ambitious developments to date. So we decided to take it to 2025, to the near future. The advancements in robotics and drone technology and AI systems are a theme inside of our own fiction as we become more dependent on robotics as opposed to the soldiers in order to enforce military interests around the world. It was very important for it to feel grounded and authentic. All of these kinds of concepts are really great ways that we can take technology from today and apply it to be really amazing gameplay content, which is what you're after when you're making a first-person shooter. We're focusing everything on telling a better story. So motion capture allows us to capture the entire performance. Every breath, every hesitation, every emotion comes through, and this allows our characters to connect better with the players and tell a more mature story. Call of Duty Black Ops took place in the first Cold War. This game, we knew we wanted to include the characters that people love to play and that they played with, but we also wanted to make it this epic, generation-spanning story. So in Black Ops 2, as you are progressing through this game and playing through this game, the choices you make and your performance within the game actually dictates what's happening in the story. So you have different hero characters that will live or die. You have this whole war going on where the performance you do on these missions and your skill as you're playing them will actually influence the outcome of this war. This is groundbreaking for the Call of Duty franchise. When you talk about pushing the boundaries on Call of Duty, it means providing a better technology that translates that ambitious fiction and that exciting experience. On the technology side, we started with lighting. Lighting is really the most important thing that you can do for the visual quality of the game. It's that last layer of polish that you put on everything that really brings the entire environment together and makes it feel immersive for players. And that's why we've put a lot of energy into completely overhauling how we do lighting in this game. Call of Duty has always been about the fast, fluid, responsive gameplay. So that's what 60 frames a second is about. It lets players really have control over their character and feel powerful when they play in the game. In Black Ops 2, when you're looking at core gameplay systems, you have to honor where you've been, but you also have to look forward. The multiplayer community is everything to us. We have such an avid fan base. Creative Class is sweet. We've been expanding the content, and we've been playing with the categories. We've been moving these pieces around. You can choose what is the most important things to you and forget about the things that are not that important. This will open up doors for play styles you have not seen. It is going to be fantastic. You're trying to take into account all the various distinct personalities, play styles, attitudes, and making sure that there's something for every one of these players in our game in a way that doesn't conflict with each other and takes the whole game forward. Zombies Art is an unlock at the end of World at War and became many people's favorite part of the game. The map is going to be bigger than any map we've ever done. It's about just making it more open for the player, more choices, things to do. It's going to be exciting. Call of Duty Black Ops 2, whether it's the campaign, the multiplayer, or the zombies, Treyarch's going to be breathing new life into the franchise. It's magical stuff, and I think fans of Black Ops are going to love it.